Good morning. Good afternoon, actually, everyone. Welcome to Mulberry Talent Partners Career Conversation. I'm just going to give everybody a few moments to log in. Perfect. Looks like everybody is rolling in. So again, thank you for tuning in to Mulberry Talent Partners Career Conversation. I'm Kelsey, Mulberry's Talent Acquisition Coordinator. I'm covering for Laura today while she's out. So a little bit about Mulberry. We are a full service recruiting and staffing firm headquartered in Portland, Oregon with an office in the Silicon Valley. We specialize in placements of human resources, professional and financial office, payroll and operations positions with direct hire, temp to hire, and temporary opportunities. I would um, advise that you reach out to our, or check out our mulberrytalent.com uh, website to see our previous career and leadership conversations, as well as our upcoming conversations. And if you're a job seeker, check out our career opportunities that we currently have available. So a few quick introductions today. We are welcoming Lauren Francis, our amazing founder and president of Mulberry Talent Partners. She started Mulberry in June of 2017 and comes with over 25 years of talent acquisition experience. We're also welcoming Dana Pratt. She is a performance consultant, trainer, and coach. And she'll be talking to us today about networking internally and identifying your personal brand. So we want today to be super interactive, so feel free to use the Q&A function on Zoom, and we'll try to get to any and all questions that come in. So without further ado, I will pass it off to Lauren and Dana. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see everyone again today. Welcome to almost the weekend. Um, I wanted to just say, hi, Dana. Welcome. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course. Dana and I have known each other for many years. And originally, we worked together uh, while she was at New Seasons. We um, helped uh, place a few people in the organization. And we've been connected through networking. Actually, we met initially at a Paherma event, which is a Portland Human Resource Association event when those were still in person. Um, and uh, anyway, we've been connected for a long time. And so we're really happy to have you here today because I know networking is a passion of mine and yours. And, mm -hmm. and we want to share our, uh, our, our knowledge and experience and help people to feel more, I don't know, connected to networking. I think networking, the word is, is a little bit, I don't know, it, it's, it's a tough one. And I think we're, it sounds like we are working, you know, network is work when it's, it's really more of a relationship building and connection opportunities. And I think we kind of have to change our mindset. So looking forward to hearing what you have to say, and what you have to share with our audience today. So thanks for being here. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you again for the opportunity. So networking is, it's very interesting as I talk with people about networking and you can actually see in many people's faces just a change in color. It kind of sort of goes to gray and the, this sounds terrible. <laughs> um, and I will say that I was one of those people once and I'm a relatively extroverted, gregarious person at work. But when I was first told, and in this case, it was around a job search that I needed to get out and talk to. Uh, and of course, in my mind, I remember this as 30 hiring managers every week. No, I'm sure that's not what they said, because um, that's impossible. <laughs> but that's what I remember. And I was like, that, no, this sounds terrible. Um, and so I was a little resistant at first. So I always have to remember, because I, now I'm kind of a, a convert, right? And a evangelist for networking. And so I always have to remember, yes, but you weren't always that way. So one of the things that I want to focus on today in particular is internal networking. So there's been lots of fantastic speakers coming on this series to talk a little bit about the importance of networking. And I think that internal networking, so networking within the organization, or quite honestly, 
people say, you know, where do I start within your family, within your friend group is really what we should talk a little bit about today, because I'm um, sort of my tagline has become these days, you know, networking. It's not just about getting a job. It's about doing your job. And there's not a leader out there who's not complaining about silos in their organization or people who do not collaborate across functions. And so this is just a way to break that down. Hmm. Well, you know, you're passionate about networking. Is it because you're a, what, why are you passionate about it? Like what's, what's to be passionate about? I mean, a lot of people think <laughs> oh my God, I'm sales and I, I'm not a salesperson. And then it's, then it's actually, it has to do with me selling me, which is, oh my God, right? So yeah. tell us about why you're so passionate about it. Well, it's interesting because there are people who connect it to sales, I'm with you. It's like, ew. <laughs> you know, as I started to think about um, starting my own business in the last few years, I was really hesitant. I'm like, I don't know if I can do the business development side. I don't know. I don't want to be that person cold calling. I'm afraid of that. That sounds terrible. Um, and what one of the reasons I'm passionate about this is, is it works. So um, I was able to, when I first relocated back to Portland in 2009, my college roommate walked my resume over to her next door neighbor <laughs> and he hired me. I mean, that's crazy. And so I always tell people, well, you never know who's connected to whom and where the next job, the next opportunity, the next piece of information is going to come. I've also had some really good mentors around this, and I don't think I recognized it at first, but when I was working as a training person at Macy's, I had a boss who says, it never goes, never fails that when I meet a new resource within two weeks, I need that person. And it was interesting because part of that's the law of attraction, where you meet somebody and then you start to realize that, oh, that person has skills, a service, a tool that I could really use. Um, and so I started to realize that that was really true. Um, when I finally got my job at ODOT through my college roommate's neighbor, <laughs> he would say things like, well, do you know anybody who does fill in the blank? And I would say, why, yes, I do. Because even though I've lived in Seattle the last 22 years, I've spent the last six months networking. And so I'd have resources. So of course I looked brilliant and who doesn't want to feel brilliant. So those are some of the reasons I'm really passionate about networking externally. Um, how I learned about internal networking was from a colleague who worked in the finance department and one year, you know, we crossed into a new year and he sent me an email and said, my new year's resolution is to go to lunch with somebody in a different department every week. And I was just, of course, I was honored that he would put me on his list. And so we went to lunch and I thought, well, this is really smart because mm -hmm. he started to really realize, you know, what's going on in this, in the, in the, in the, in the organization in different areas? What are people working on? I mean, he saw it from a finance perspective, but now he really said, where's that money really being spent? And are we, are we duplicating efforts? Where are some opportunities? How can I connect people in the organization? Mm -hmm. And that really led him to leadership roles because he had a much bigger scope of what was happening in the organization as a whole. Was he, was he, was he thinking about like career growth for people like that kind of a model or was it just more, more um, grassroots? You know, I'm not exactly sure. Um, mm -hmm. I would imagine it probably had something to do with career growth and his desire to increase his own visibility profile, maybe frankly rebrand himself that there was a perception about who he was, what he offered. Um, and so this allowed him to build deeper relationships with other people in the organization. Well, he took the time too. And a lot of people, that's not all people take the time. And it's also, I, I think the way to think about it too, is that I think we need to change the way we think about networking is it really is an investment mm -hmm. in your career and in yourself. It's like we go to college, that's an investment. 
you know, we, 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 we take our uh, exercise classes, that's an investment in time and, you know, money. And this is the same thing. It's an investment in our careers and it's time. And it, it, it actually, it makes, it makes a difference, huge difference. And we have a question that just came in from Okay. Apple. So she's wondering how organizations can support internal networking. Hmm. That's a great question. I think one of the things I would say is that our supervisors encouraging it. Mm -hmm. um, and is does what is the organizational culture around that? Now, if there are HR people on here, particularly HR people who are responsible for staffing, nobody's going to be that interested in hearing what I'm going to say next. But one of the things that we get into trouble around is people are focused on their job rather than their career. And so they're so busy, busy, busy doing today's job rather than thinking about how do I position myself not only to do this job better, but to establish myself and my career. And there are some organizations out there that are kind of insular, right? And so they actually do an okay job of um, encouraging internal networking. So one way to encourage internal networking is that you have a, you bring together a group of leaders. Maybe you have a leader breakfast um, once a month where people are seated at different tables rather than everybody in their own department. You know, HR sits over there and finance sits over there and engineering sits over there. Um, but rather that, you know, people have a little bit of assigned seating and, you know, table questions or some sort of activity that forces people to work together. So that's one way. Uh, the other way is is sort of internal mentoring programs, which are really challenging to run. Um, I have always found that that true mentorship really does sort of create, you know, you kind of need the love connection, you know, that this person is, I'm connected to you and I'm really committed to your help. But to be able to say, okay, can we do that in a different way? Is there a way to share expertise? So instead of long engagements of mentors having to work with mentees for six months, a year, et cetera, it's like, I want you to go work with Lauren for a few sessions and, and talk with her about this thing. Mm. And that it's, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. So that could be a way um, if you do individual development planning mm -hmm. where you're taking a look at your talent review and then, okay, it's like, we see that this person has potential to move a couple of levels in this organization in the next five years. Mm -hmm. Who do they need to know? How can we support that in some way and provide that engagement? Maybe it's you, you go to, well, we don't go to coffee right now, but maybe you have a virtual coffee with three people. Like, I know this person, I know this person, I think you should meet, this is why, um, to help facilitate that. Particularly if you have high introvert folks that are like, Ugh, the idea of just reaching out cold, even where I work with this person sounds scary. You could facilitate the introduction and why they, you want them to get together. Would you say it's more, more common that companies don't really have a program set up for this and you really have, kind of have to do it on your own? I would think that that's almost, yeah. I mean, it would be a, a, a high-performing company that would do this. So this, for the most part, you would really have to do this on your own. Right. Um, and you know, one of the things that I think is interesting, so if you go through LinkedIn and you look at all the profiles out there and you just cruise through them, many people will say, I am a software engineer at this company. I am an HR manager at this company. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things that I would encourage people to do is start to think about you're a professional in your own right. Mm -hmm. And that you just happen to be working at this organization right now. And that doesn't mean that you should be less committed to the mission and values of that organization, not at all. It just means that this is where I am right now. I kind of liken it to the film industry mm. where you come together to do a project and you're highly committed to that project for a time, mm -hmm. but you're also building relationships and learning new skills and looking for the next gig when this one wraps up. Mm -hmm. So 
to to be able to that make position it in a way that people say, okay, what what am I going to do next internally or externally, and who do I need to talk to to facilitate that? Good point. Yeah, really good point. I hadn't thought about that. Makes a lot of sense. There's always the next, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what, what, you know, I, I will kind of change course just for a second is tell me about reputation, Ugh. right? A reputation is there's so many things uh, to it and reputation in high school is a little different than reputation <laughs> in the workplace and, you know, how you, how your reputation follows you, whether it's your, mm -hmm. you know, your um, social media activities or how you, how you handle yourself in a professional setting. Yeah, I've heard it called the silent resume. Ah. You know, we spend so much time working on this piece of paper mm -hmm. or on the screen. Mm -hmm. And really it's what we do every day that establishes how we get talked about. Because yeah. that's really what this is. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. someone says, you know what I need? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it this way. What if you needed a plumber mm -hmm. or you needed a contractor because you were thinking about remodeling your kitchen? Mm -hmm you probably wouldn't hesitate to go next door or to hop on social media or next door or those kinds of things and say, hey, does anyone have a contractor that they would recommend for a kitchen remodel? You don't, of course you would do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing is true with career networking mm -hmm. is that people do the same thing. N there isn't a business person out there that doesn't want their perfect candidate to fall in their lap. Nobody wants to go through that process of writing a job description, posting a job, interviewing a bunch of people. Uh, the recruiter certainly doesn't want to do it. Um, and so <laughs> and so if somebody can say, oh, I know the perfect person, I actually met this person. Yeah. Oh, it's just like the skies open up and rainbows come down. It's the best. Yeah. So. I think that that your reputation on how you operate every day, I mean, it, that doesn't mean that we're perfect. I mean, right. I think that you're likening it to like the high school reputation versus your professional reputation. Um, it can be really heavy because yeah. all those things contribute and Thank people you. remember you and the world is so small now with social media that we do have to be careful about how we represent ourselves. How we show up and you really got to take the long view and really think about how you show up. It's yeah. really important. And I think sometimes people are a little short-sighted. Uh, at least I've seen some of that uh, in, in that regard. Um, one of the things we were gonna talk about today, and I don't know, Kelsey, is there anything else we wanna jump into or are we okay? No, not yet. We're okay, all right. Uh, what about uh, uh, your, the personal brand idea? Mm -hmm. and, and like the big hot word and- yeah whatever. And it's fine, but I actually think there's some power to it and some very, it's very important, um, to talk about. Yeah. Um, so important. And yet it's when I first talking about, yeah, yeah, when I first started talking about personal branding and I can't remember, it's been many, many years now, it mm -hmm. seemed very new mm -hmm. and, um, really trying to think of yourself as a product, mm -hmm. uh, was kind of, took some time. And I find that this is hard for everybody. Mm. It's like the part of it is modesty, right? Mm -hmm. And not wanting to feel like mm -hmm. I, you're tooting your own horn or you're being a uh, braggart. Um, but there is a middle ground, you know, you can look around and see people who are um, highly arrogant and braggadocious. And you're like, well, I don't want to be like that. Right. But you also can't not represent yourself. So the way I find this to be really helpful and where internal mar internal networking can really help you here is to go ask people. Mm. So when you think of my work, when you think of what it is to work with me, what would you say? Mm. And it's much easier for them to say, give me that piece of paper. These are all the great things that you are, right? Mm. Um, and you can return the favor for them. Sure. It's like, and you know, these are the things that I think of when I think of working with you. In fact, that could be a great opportunity to start and to invite a networking conversation. Say, mm -hmm. I've always admired you. Here are a couple of things, a couple of reasons why mm -hmm. I am working on um, thinking about what might be my next step. 
I would love to meet with you and talk a little bit about how you see my work, my reputation, and what my gaps might be. Mm -hmm. So you end up having just this really robust conversation. You walk away with interesting words, language, ideas. Generally, they're not going to tell you the stuff that's bad. So you're going to feel good about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if you talk about gaps, hopefully you'll be able to uh, encourage a conversation that speaks to how might I feel that. Um, the other piece about networking is it's good relationship repair. Mm -hmm. You know, if you realize that maybe you've made a misstep or there's a department in your company that, you know, you've had a, a, te a tense relationship with, this is really an opportunity to go back and say, I just want to talk with you a little bit about some of my goals and your goals and how those can mesh, because I realize we've had some problems in the past. Well, you know what it is, it's taking responsibility mm -hmm. and owning it and, and actually, <laughs> You know, wanting to repair that relationship. And, and it's, just, it's just such an important step that I'm so glad you mentioned that. What do, what do you think about, uh, you know, and I think this does go to speak to reputation. It's the same, mm -hmm. same thing. It's kind of your personal brand is your reputation and on it, you know, and, and so it goes, right? Uh, what about, here's one of the things about, how do you feel about follow-up? meaning you reach out to someone mm. and it's silent. And then where, where do you draw the line between being a, let's say kind of a nuisance or, and, and, and I think the other thing, when I was addressing um, PSU students this week earlier, you know, just the idea of, uh, you know, how do you, how do you follow up? And, and is it's okay if you don't hear back from them, yeah. not, it's not about you. You know, and I, and that's a real tough one because people go, oh my God, there's something about me that's wrong and they don't want to talk to me. And it's usually not that, no. I think it's important to talk about this because I think yeah. that's one of the biggest things that people cower and say, oh my God, they didn't get back to me. There must be something wrong. Yeah. Um, people are busy and especially right now, people right. are completely swamped. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty high unemployment rate. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, a lot of people are out there mm -hmm. asking for networking um, appointments. And so how do you differentiate yourself? Mm -hmm. So why do I want to speak with you? Mm -hmm. So if you saw somebody interesting on LinkedIn, perhaps they work in an industry that you're interested in, perhaps they work at a company that you're interested in learning more about, mention that. Mm -hmm. um, and don't hesitate to follow up. So I would give people a couple of weeks, sure, you know, to say, reach out first, follow mm -hmm. up in a couple of weeks. And then you might just say, if this isn't a good time for you, is there anybody else that you would recommend I might talk with? Right. right. So that you can keep, keep working your network, right? And expanding that. So that's what I would probably suggest in terms of not, not taking that personally. The mm -hmm. other thing is, this is really where it is salesy, is mm -hmm. just like if you were a salesperson mm -hmm. and you knew that you needed to go out and have 10 contacts a day, mm -hmm. you'd go out and do that because this is a numbers game. So send out 10 requests. And you'll start to realize what your averages are. So maybe you hear back from five of those people, 50%. That's fantastic. And so you'll just say, okay, so I'm going to just send 10 requests a month and have a networking appointment, a coffee chat, a 15 minute Zoom call once a week. Right. And I guarantee you, you will be shocked at how that will benefit your career. Great. And we just had a question come in. Yeah. So Jeff is asking about the difference in networking conversations versus informational interviews. Mm. Um, really good question. I don't sure that they are wildly different. Mm. It it really it really depends on your purpose. Mm -hmm. So an informational interview uh, is probably for many people going to try to get to, you know, what was your career path? What do you love about your company or your industry? Can you take a look at my resume and just let me know if you had an opening today, what would you, 
would you hire me or are there gaps here that you might suggest that I work on? Mm -hmm. um, here is my positioning statement. What feedback do you have on that based on my experience? So that is really, I am trying to get somewhere. And even in an informational interview, this is not about asking for the job. Right. And that's why some people are skittish about accepting a interview, a networking request or an informational interview request because I don't have any jobs. And you might find that you may people like, uh, I'm sorry, we're not hiring right now. It's like, right. well, that's not what this is about. <laughs> I really am trying just to learn from you. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if I'm not really looking for a job, so right now I'm not looking for a job, I still want to network because that allows me to help others. Mm -hmm. Maybe I know somebody who I can connect with them and the world is round. If you help others, they will help you. Uh, and again, maybe that's something that only, you know, when you talk about why am I passionate about this, I've just seen it work. And in some cases have been surprised, mm -hmm. like, wow, this, my network has been really fruitful and it's, it's very humbling to see how people will help you if you help them. Yeah, it, it's, it's so great. It's so rewarding to help people and to offer resources and, and, you know, wisdom and whatever we can do. And, you know, I, and I think too, when, you know, when reaching one of the tips I had for, for uh, the, the college students this earlier this week was, you know, one of the things is you, is that you want to make it easy for people to get back to you. Mm -hmm. Communications. Sometimes what happens is you're 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 asking multiple questions, or you're 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 trying to, you know, it, it can be it can be um, a burdensome for someone to to respond as opposed to something that is a little bit light, more light. You want to be efficient and effective, but not too. I don't know. Sometimes people go in with a lot of. Uh, ask and it just can be mm -hmm. difficult. I don't know if you have an example of that, but um, it's important to uh, try to tailor your, your communications. Yeah, I mean, I think that there are some people who are a little uh, um, put off by just like, hi, would you be my mentor? Yeah, right. And it's like, well, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so to your point, let's start small, just like, you know, on the, on, on that, professional dating site. It's just lunch. Let's do, uh, let's do a 20 minute conversation on zoom first. Sure. See if, you know, and then ask three questions and be out. Right. Right. Don't you, don't you agree though, that zoom is the perfect networking opportunity? <laughs> it's awesome. And for people who are like in transition or even not, it's like, I, do I miss going to coffee and lunch and happy hour with people? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And for those people who are like, um, yeah, I'm on a limited budget. I, you know, really want to watch my pennies. Zoom is awesome. It's I mean, you're not buying coffee. You're not driving anywhere. You're not paying for parking. It's awesome. And yeah. Yeah, the whole world literally is your oyster. So you're no longer just interviewing and, and, and networking here in town, mm -hmm. you can reach out to anybody yeah. and request a 15 minute conversation. I know we're running out of time, but I yep. think also to encourage people to join these little networking, you know, webinars and things, because you can meet people that way too. And hey, we're on the same webinar. What did you think? And you know, you can, and it's so much more like right now, you know, we're all on this together and I can't see everyone, but you know, you, there are people that you can connect with from this opportunity, from the, from this event and from others. So anyway, Kelsey, you're back. Yay. I'm back. <laughs> Share my screen. So thank you both Lauren and Dana. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, so I wanted to share a few of our upcoming conversations that we have. So we have Alex Kerr, a learning and development consultant coming up on Tuesday, November 10th. It's a leadership conversation and he'll be talking about learning and development insights. And then we have Kanika Tolver. She's coming back. We've had her Ooh. before. She's on Thursday, November 19th, and she'll be talking about pivoting your career during a pandemic, a very relevant topic. And then here are a few ways that you can stay in touch with us. So feel free to reach out to us on our website or LinkedIn or email Lauren directly. And same with Dana, we have her 
website, LinkedIn, and her email. I know there were a couple of questions that we didn't get to, so we'll be sending out a follow-up email early next week with the recording as well. And then I want to thank you all for choosing to fly with Mulberry and <laughs> have many different options when it comes to webinars. So <laughs> happy that you chose us. And a big thank you to Lauren and Dana for a very informative um, conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Kelsey. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye-bye. All right.